striving to achieve a distinction in your individual units and in the course as a whole is something you should consider for at least three good reasons. First of all, you'll get a great feeling of satisfaction knowing that you've been able to achieve the highest grade. Secondly, it will help your application stand out when you apply for jobs or for the next level of your education. A distinction suggests that you are a person who puts the most into what you do rather than somebody who settles for something that is just okay. And thirdly, the, the academic standard that you need to meet in order to gain a distinction is very similar to the standards you'll have to meet if you continue with undergraduate and postgraduate study. The assessor is really looking for two things in particular when applying the distinction criteria. They want to see an appropriate level of academic rigour, which you need to evidence by accurately citing a wide range of references in your assignments using the Harvard referencing system. The assessor doesn't want your uninformed or unsubstantiated opinion. They're looking for your opinion based on the knowledge you have gained and the research you have conducted, accurately referenced. Keep in mind that a, a reference to a learned journal or an established text is much more powerful than referencing a blog or a quote from a tabloid newspaper and uh, never cite Wikipedia as a formal academic source because it just isn't. Wikipedia is content from various sources collated by somebody who may or quite likely may not be a subject expert. So read Wikipedia by all means, use it as a starting point for further investigation, but don't reference it in your assignments. The second thing the assessor is looking for at this level is your ability to apply the theories and concepts you have studied to real world situations. Ultimately, your business education is designed to help you build a successful business career, where it will be essential to apply your knowledge to real situations. To gain a distinction, you will need to meet all the pass and the merit criteria we have already discussed, plus the additional distinction criteria. The first distinction criteria for Unit 3 requires you to critically evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of different approaches to recruitment and selection, supported by specific examples. The key difference between this and the pass and the merit criteria is that now you're being asked to critically evaluate. So this means you need to show that you can analyse the information available and then make considered judgments using your knowledge and experience. You also need to support your critical evaluation with some specific examples. This means spending some time looking at all the course materials provided by the college, but also reading the recommended resources list on the last page of the unit specification, and then conducting your own research and background reading. The second distinction criteria for Unit 3 requires you to critically evaluate HRM practices and application within an organisational context using a range of specific examples. So build on the explanation and exploration of the pass and merit criteria and provide a critical evaluation. That means more depth and a range of specific examples. And finally, distinction criteria three, which requires you to provide a critical evaluation specifically in relation to employee relations and HRM practices. So to summarise the distinction criteria, two important factors to consider are academic rigour, read widely and use Harvard referencing to reference any sources that you refer to, and make sure that you apply your ideas about HRM theory and practice to real world situations. So make reference to real examples and case studies in your assignments. You also have to, to critically analyse the issues raised in the assignment questions. So make reasoned judgments about the information you are presenting based on your knowledge and experience and supported by evidence and examples. Finally, three tips which you should keep in mind when writing your assignments. First of all, make sure that you sense check and spell check your projects before you submit them. 
correct spelling and grammar aid understanding of your key points, uh, but they also demonstrate that you really care about what you're writing. Secondly, take every opportunity to showcase your knowledge and understanding of the core concepts, models and theories in the unit and demonstrate your ability to apply them. And thirdly, keep close to your tutor for support and guidance. So that brings us to the end of these guidance lectures for Unit 2. I hope you found them useful and they've helped you to prepare for writing your assignments.